I'm joining the blocks in this quilt using our continuous batting and backing strip method. I've cut the backing 7 inches wide. After cutting the backing strips, I pressed one of the long edges under 3 eighths of an inch. The turned down edge will become our fabric lip and will be used for closing the backs after the rows are joined. All I needed to do to align my backing was place one side right along the stitched placement guide. I also opened out the pressed under edge to prevent it from getting stitched closed when the quilting stitches are applied. With our backing in place, it's time to add decorative quilt stitches to our blocks. And we're going to design these stitches with the amazing Design Center that is my very favorite feature on the Dream Machine. The Design Center gives me the flexibility to quickly design quilting stitches to go with every quilt I dream up. When planning the quilting stitches for One Fish, Two Fish, I decided that the areas that I wanted to quilt were going to be water and I want my water to look like it has movement. So I've selected a stippling design that I'm stitching out with silver metallic thread. To get started, from the home menu, we will select the design center. When I go into the design center to create a fill I'm going to use for decorative quilting stitches, I don't want the outline to appear in the stitching design. So the first thing I do is I turn lines to off. The next selection defines the type of fill I'm planning on using. And for this quilt, I'm going to be using stippling. So I go into the properties box and I select stippling. And I'm going to choose a medium gray so that it will show against my design. The next thing I'm going to do is scan the blocks that I'm working with. This is going to help me define the areas that I want to put quilting into. So I touch the illustration button and select scan and this magical machine is going to scan my blocks. There are four areas in the block combination that we have on the screen that I need to add quilting stitches to. The first is the solid block at the bottom. So the first thing I will do is I will select from the shapes menu, a square. Next I'm going to resize the square so that it fits into the design the way I have it imagined. And I find that it's helpful to write down the measurements that you're using so that if you need to add the same element in a different part of your quilt, you can match all of your settings. Now that I have it the size that I want, I'm going to bring it down and center it into the block. Now that I have the square positioned exactly where I want it, it's time for me to add a triangle. Now when I add this triangle, the first thing I need to do is I need to rotate it. And I've got to rotate this 135 degrees. And I need this triangle to be shorter than it is wide. I'm going to lighten my image up a little so that I can see my shapes and I'm going to put them into position and fine tune my position with the arrows. And once I'm happy with the positioning, I will select OK. All of the triangles that I'm going to be filling with stippling are the same size. And what's great about working in the design center is that once I have a triangle made, all I have to do is copy it and then move the copy to a new position and eyeball the line up and I can go into size or rotate if I want to use the arrows again. Now I will copy it again and I'll move the new copy into the last position. 
And what I'm trying to do is establish a visual alignment between these elements by moving them into position so that the left side is straight, the bottom is even, and the right side follows in line. Once I have the third triangle positioned, I am ready to assign the fill stitch. So I select the fill and I just touch on each one of my designated areas. We're going to select next and in the next step we're going to adjust the spacing between the stippling and the size of the stippling. I'm going to make each of my elements just a little bit bigger than the default settings. And I am changing the distance between the stippling to 4 and the spacing to 6. And I'm choosing to do it on all of the elements. I always select each of the elements one more time to make certain that they're all the same. And they are, so let's go to our preview. And there we can see my beautiful stippling stitches have been laid right over my scan so I can tell exactly where they're going to fall. And everything looks great. I'm going to click Set. And I'm ready to go to embroidery. When I'm doing my decorative quilting, my personal preference is to not have the knots showing on the back of the quilt. So I always pull my bobbin thread to the front before I start and loosely hold on to it when I start my machine. You never want to hold the thread too tightly because it interferes with the tie-off action. So we'll let it go for a few stitches and I'll stop the machine before it goes very far and I will clip the threads so that they don't get tangled. And I'll stop the machine each time it advances to a new position and I will again pull the bobbin thread to the front. My beautiful quilting is finished. No overruns into areas where the stitches weren't supposed to go, no backtracking, and no broken stitches. It's almost like the design center was invented just to work with shortcut quilt blocks. What could be better?